I, I met Francis Ford Coppola last year. We were both in the same speaking calendar in um, Buenos Aires, Argentina. And, and Coppola said this thing. He said, you know, it's kind of obvious, but he said, look, this is really simple. He said, do what you love, not because you just want to be you know, self-interested. He says, do it because you'll be better at it. He says, I love wine, and so I have a winery, and I think it's pretty good. He said, I love food, and you know, so I have a restaurant business, and I have a pasta business. Right? He's starting a resort, apparently, in South America, and he says he uses all of those just to generate cash so he can finance his own movies. Right? And so, pretty obvious, but I hadn't thought of it in those terms. Do, it, do what you love because you'll be better. You'll be willing to put in the extra time, the extra mental energy, because you love it. I saw, it's been several years ago, I saw uh, Jim Collins speak. Anybody read any of his books? He wrote two great books. Oh, a lot of people. So, Built to Last and then Good to Great, right? And it's several years ago, and he used no slides of any kind. He's drawn circles in the air like this. But there was something he said that has stuck with me. I remember it like it was yesterday. And he was talking, at first it seemed he was talking about companies, But as he got into it, it really seemed like he was talking to us each as individuals. And he said, trying to think of what you should do next, he says, think about these three circles. And the first circle is, what are you good at? He says, by the time you reach a certain age, most people have a sense of what they're good at. Right? He says, but watch out for this circle, because in this circle, he says, lives the curse of competence. Right? Just because you're good at something doesn't mean you should do it. He says, you might be, if you look around your school or your office, you might discover you're the fastest person you ever met at the keyboard. He says, does that mean you should be a data entry operator? Probably not, right? He said he was really good at math. And everybody said to him, Jim, you should be a math major. And so he listened to that advice, and he got to school, and he was, he continued to be good at math, but he ran into people living in the second circle. And the second circle is, what are you born to do? Right? When are you the happiest? When are you in a state of flow? And he said, he met people, I think it was mostly guys, he met people who were never happier than when they were solving equations right? and doing proofs. And he said, you know, I realized that good as I was at math, this is not my true calling. Right? And so he thought about those two circles. And then he thought about this third one. He says, don't overemphasize this one, but you've got to think about it, which is, what will people pay you to do? Because he said, you know, they say do what you love and the money will follow. He says it's not literally true. He said his favorite thing is to listen to Brahms symphonies. He says there are Brahms symphonies I've listened to a hundred times, and I have yet to find anybody who will pay me a nickel to listen to Brahms, Brahms, symphony, <laughs> Brahms symphonies. So he says think about this intersection. Think about where you are. Oh, and by the way, then he drew a little box around it, and he said then there's this other thing called who, Right? He said, which is, who are you going to work with? Who's on the bus with you? Because you can show up for work every day, and you can do stuff you're good at, and you can do stuff you're born to do. You can do stuff that people pay you to do. But if you're working with people that you hate, or that hate you, or that have no respect for you, still not going to be a happy camper. right? And so that's his kind of personal formula for this. And so he stopped speaking, as I will eventually here in a few minutes. And he stopped speaking, and I'm no kidding, he talked for an hour, and this was a small part of what he talked about, but 100% of the questions were about the three circles. In fact, 99% of the questions were about this circle here. What are you born to do? Because people kind of have a sense of what they're good at. It's pretty, there's a pretty efficient job market telling you what people will pay you to do, but what am I born to do? That's a much harder question. And Jim said, well, I can't answer that question for you, but I can answer it for me. He said, I was a kind of a nerdy kid. When I was a kid, I'd get out my magnifying glass, and I would watch a bug. He says, and I'd get one of these old-style laboratory notebooks, and I'd write down my observations. Every day, I'd watch that bug, and how does he eat, and does he sleep, and what's the bug doing all day? He admitted up front he was a nerdy kid, right? Anyhow, so that's what he would do. And so he said he found himself at this point in life. He was working for Hewlett Packard, great company, which he openly acknowledges, but he wasn't happy. And so he said he got out one of those those laboratory notebooks, and he wrote on it a bug at the top, and then he wrote a bug called Jim. And for two years, he kept a laboratory notebook on himself. It wasn't a journal. He wasn't writing down the occurrences of the day. He wrote down during the day, during each day for two years, when did I feel at my best? When was I in a state of flow? When did I feel the happiest? Because that's really important. And he said it took him two years of discovery. This is the tortoise mind again. It took him two years of discovery, but he eventually figured out he was happiest when he was teaching and when he was working on systems, you know, things with lots of little complexity, 
complexity is a moving part. And he said, figured out, I should be teaching about systems. And so he did. And I think he taught about systems at Stanford for a while as well until he found a, another calling. But he kept a lab notebook on himself. And so I've actually made this suggestion to somebody who's very near and dear to me. And that person followed this advice and got some value on it. And so if you're wondering, if you're drawing those three circles in your head and you're wondering, what am I born to do? I'd encourage you to try this lab notebook. It's an experiment, right? Can't hurt.